Attention maggots, this is Sergeant Slaughter from WWE and G.I. Joe, the real American hero. You're listening to Mega Power Radio. Don't touch that dial. And that's an order. What's shaking, Mega Maniacs? It is Monday, October 20th, and we are hot on the road to Hell in a Cell, the final stop there, in fact. And it is the time after Raw where we gather together on MegapowersRadio.com to discuss the events of the show for our Raw post show. What's going on, everyone out there? We want to hear what you got to say. It's the most interactive post-Raw experience available. We have a phone line that will be opening up around 1130, so you could have your voice heard here on Mega Powers Radio. The number to dial in is area code 760-512-7247. And, of course, the chat room is scrolling awesomely as well. We already got five times combo. Ferris 419 Wazili in Silent Wind of Doom. Although some, the doom is silent. some people are saying that they um, are having some problems with the uh, the chat room not working, or not the chat room, but the the stream not working properly. I, I guess Blog Talk Radio didn't update. We, we apologize to you out there. Hopefully you're hearing us. Um, yeah, we're just gonna keep going forward here. If you can't hear us, hopefully you'll be checking us out in the archive version. But moving along, let me introduce the panelists that we have here this evening. First off, my name is Mike Payton. Of course, I'll be hosting things here. With me is the leader of the Drew Crew, Mr. Drew White. We have a depressed Sergeant Slaughter now. At least he's seen a bit more depressed this week than last. He he is rather depressed in that sound bite, isn't he? Like, and that's an order <laughs> from Bob yeah, the press of Shaw and Sergeant Slaughter, double S with a D. Listen, he was. I'm sure he was very tired. It was a very stressful weekend. Oh, I, 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 I appreciate Sarge's time. Uh, also with hey, us here is too. the host of Addicted to Anime here on Mega Powers Radio and the leader of UDMMA, Mr. Steven Huego. Wait up. You're not efficiently using your U. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Well, it's, what, what, what about, <laughs> Hello. What about my U? Oh, okay. That, <laughs> I'm not you trying to think. The U. It's like you. Tony's Om Noms. It's just not loud enough. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> we'll move along then to the final participant we have on our panel this evening, the president of smartcutmoment.com, Mr. Tony Mango. Hey, I, I thought that I was going to be the depressing one today. I've been having a bad day, but fuck, we've got depressing news, Wago. We've got depressing news, Slaughter. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> well, Sasha well, Slaughter, he's not really depressing. He's, he's just depressed in general. All right, depressing intro, Slaughter, I guess is a better term for it. There you go. <laughs> Those are not baggots. We, uh, ah, we got some shit coming your way. <laughs> Don't touch that. Uh, oh, I love Sarge. Thank you, Sarge, for taking the time out of there. I really appreciate it, really. Uh, so, guys, let's discuss Raw. What was the number one thing we took away yeah, from it tonight? Yeah, so we can mock you. <laughs> Wago, what's the first thing you took away from the show tonight? Or the most important thing? Shitty promos, but I enjoyed uh, the last segment of the night. Is it raining where you are, Wago? I don't, I'm having really bad connection issues right now. I don't know what the deal is. Definitely sounds like it's raining. <laughs> it's, I might try. I might try a good old reset. I don't know. Sounds like you're in a hurricane. 
God. Stand back. Uh, Mr. Drew White, what's the number one thing you took away from tonight's show? That uh, would be that hope that the show was good. Again, like third straight week, thankfully. And, uh, you know, Orton was looking like a certified badass for the most part for, for throughout most of the night. Really enjoying what he was doing. I want to make sure I heard that. You, you thought tonight's show was good? Yes. Okay. Uh, Tony, do you agree with him? And what's the one thing you took away from the show tonight? Eh, I don't know if I'd go so far as to say that it was good. It's a step up from what it's been when we were really, really ripping on it. But... I wouldn't go that far. Uh, It's a resounding meh to me. Um, The main thing I would take away, apparently there's the World Series coming up. (laughs) I don't fucking pay attention to that, but we kept hearing that over and over again tonight, and that seems like that would be much more exciting because the crowd uh, was a lot more into that than they were these promos. Well, it's a a really big deal because the Royals have always kind of been like the jobbers of baseball. Yeah, that's actually the best way of putting it. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I didn't even know that the Royals was a fucking team. That's how well, bad they must be. Yeah, well, this is the first time they've been to the playoffs since 1985, which is actually the last time they've been to the World Series. So, two fun facts for you. And did they win that World Series? No, that they just made uh, it. I think they just made it. Yeah. I, I could look that up, but this is not the right show for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know who the won them in 86, just saying. Oh, is it the Mets? It was the Mets. Yeah. What? Come- oh, that was a good guess because I, I was like up New York. Mets. Do I get points for uh, when Phil- the Phillies won a couple years ago? Oh, I turned on you- the last minute of the uh, the game and I was just kind of like, hey, look at that. I watched them win. And then I turned it on. It off. counts. It counts if you could get the year. You know what was uh, really uh, fun is if you go back into the archives and listen to this past week's Dace Man show where uh, I took over for the Dace Man because he was away on a flight. And Drew joined me on the panel, and we actually covered the sports segment, and it actually wasn't too damn bad. So I appreciate your time doing that, Drew. Oh, hey. Anytime. Yeah. Glad to be a part of the Dace Man. Never, never was, so I, I actually enjoyed what we did with the Dace Man show. We are the day show now. Uh, yeah, no, it's just a one-week thing. Don't get your hopes up. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the Drew Man show. <laughs> My dad used to call me Drew Man growing up, so... Uh, for the longest time, my username on most websites was DrewMan2240. There you go, sport. Thank you. Yeah, America. Yeah, wait, you sound like you're on time now. It's pretty good. Good, good. Good, good. Chris the Drew Man good. Days. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? That's courtesy of Five Times Combo. Thank you for that one. Nice. Chris <laughs> the Drew Man. <laughs> um, so this was the final Raw on the way to Hell in a Cell and I think the most important thing that they should have been trying to get across to us was making us want to watch it uh, whether it's getting your nine ninety nine paid to have your WWE subscription running uh, or if it's forking over the $20 for a one month or what is it still 55 or whatever for pay-per-view if you're, if you're still old fashioned that way I think it's 50 for standard definition and, like, 60 for, like, HD. I think that's what it is. Uh, The the thing that most people are bummed about is that we have no world champion there. So let me go around and ask you guys, did they sell you on Hell in a Cell? Are you excited to watch it? Because, I mean, we're pretty much guaranteed that we're going to watch it because we're we're, we're journalists, quote, quote. (laughs) So so, (laughs) so we kind of have to. But, um, you know, did they make you excited for it? Just just feel like another pay-per-view that we're just going through. Uh, Tony, why don't you start us off on that one? Ah, fuck, man. They really got me to care about one match, and that's it. Um, I could not give a shit about the majority of this. And really, some of it might be okay. It might be kind of like one of those sleeper pay-per-views where there's not that much going on when you're building it up. But then when the actual pay-per-view happens, you're like, holy fuck, I, these guys actually put in the time and effort to go good matches and everything. But I don't give a shit about anything other than Rollins and Ambrose. And it's a shame because even tonight, their promo wasn't really the best thing in the world. So it's more so this week didn't do anything to help. This week either stayed the same or did some damage in some other uh, regards, but just the idea of what they've been building up for the past couple of months 
is what's making me want to see that one match. And everything else, you know, fuck it. I don't give a shit. Uh, we got lots of callers lining up in the queue. We really appreciate your guys' patience. Woo. Just hold on for a couple more minutes. We're going to finish out this topic here, and then we're going to start introducing callers on here. Again, if you want to get yourself in line, the number to dial in is area code 760-512-7247. Four seven. Get yourself in line. Hear your voice live on Mega Powers Radio's Raw Post Show with us here. So uh, let's continue along here. Drew, did they sell you on Hell in a Cell? Surprisingly, yes, they did. Because you know, uh, ever since SummerSlam, it's kind of been like uh, no, no one wants United Champions. And go, a couple weeks ago, I kind of wasn't really into the Hell in a Cell thing, mainly because the past two have just been mediocre, best. But the way that they used the cell tonight, they uh, they didn't do it throughout the night, but at one point during the night, they showed up the results of the Hell in a Cell thing. I thought that was pretty cool. It makes me remember that Hell in a Cell can be good. And then for the split second, well, not split second, but for the few moments, they had the Hell in a Cell ca- uh, cage down, and they were trapped inside it, quote, unquote. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And like Wago said at the top of the show, uh, the last segment was really good, and I would have to agree with him on that. And, you know, aside from the two Hell in a Cell matches, um, you know, the mid card matches I'm looking forward to, Damian Mizdow having his own Mizdow TV segment. I mean, that's that's got that's big news right there. That's like the. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, yeah, there's, there's been all types of problems going on with Blog Talk Radio right now. Not really sure what the deal with that is. Uh, bear with us, folks, where we're going to keep the show going, having a good time here at MegapowersRadio.com. Drew, I don't know what the hell you said. It doesn't really fucking matter. So I'm just going to pass it over to Wago. Did they sell you on this paper? Wago, I don't want to cover it during your absence. I jumped right on that shit. Oh, well, you're a pro, Wago. No thanks to you, Drew. <laughs> hey. You didn't call his name. He stepped up because you weren't there. That's not my fault, okay? <laughs> Drew, I, I brought you into the Day Spam show, and that's how you thank me. All right, and we're not going to get into this. So let's go ahead and start bringing on our callers. Our first caller, as per usual, is uh, the man from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Mr. J.D. JD, you there with us? Guys, how's it going? Yeah, I'm here. What's up? Oh, absolutely tremendous, man. How are you feeling this evening? Not too bad. I was a little uh, pissed off earlier in the evening with my Steelers losing, but they're coming back, and they're right now beating the Texans last I saw by eight points, so I'm doing okay. I can't complain now. Oh, uh, would you say they stole it? Uh, no, I wouldn't say they stole it tonight, however. I mean, they had to come back. They were playing pretty sloppy throughout the night, however, and they looked very sluggish tonight, needless to say. But uh, at least they came back in the second quarter, and uh, last I saw they were winning by eight. So I don't know if that game's over yet or not. I mean, I haven't checked the score in a while, but uh, I imagine They're up by 14 so. now, J.D. What's that? They're up by 14 now. Okay, so, yeah, talk about a big comeback in the second half from the second quarter on. I mean, they're still not a great team. That offensive line is terrible. I mean, Ben took a beating tonight. I mean, they got some breaks that went their way tonight, but uh, they got a big test ahead of them this Sunday, obviously, with Indianapolis and Mr. Locke, and then, of course, the following week on my dad's birthday against the Fag Ravens and Joe Fag. <laughs> needless to say, Dude. needless to say, I'm not a big fan of them. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Baltimore uh, bitches or the Baltimore Ratbirds or whatever you want to call them. I mean, I do not like them. And I would love to see the Sears just put their uh, helmets right in the chest of Flacco and break him into a million pieces on my dad's birthday, hopefully in a couple weeks on Mean Joe Green Knight. But that's right, beside so, the point. What were you going to say? Uh, oh, before Peyton uh, asks you about Raw, I just want to ask you your opinion of Ray Lewis. Uh, you know what? I mean, I mean, Ray Lewis is a good football player, don't get me wrong, but I mean, the thing that pisses me off, I just read tonight, Howard, just a few minutes right before we went on the air, however, there was talk that Ray Rice might be coming back to the league, and I think that's bullshit, if you ask me, that's total bullshit, in every sense of the word, and meanwhile, he's sticking up for Ray Rice, it's like freaking... 
Randy or Seth Rollins sticking up for Randy suck me off Orton, which we're going to get into talking about Raw tonight. I mean, this show tonight, it wasn't a bad show for the most part. However, there were some good parts to it. But once again, it seems like JBL continues to be a wannabe ass-kissing cheerleader for the authority, if you will, as he is every week, it seems like. Then you have Randy cock me Orton saying, oh, Kansas City's never done anything for 29 years, blah, 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 blah. You know what, Randy? Shut the F up and quit sucking off our Triple H and the authority. I mean, seriously, give me a break. Then you talk about disgraceful, Howler. Let's talk about how about that Big E Rusev thing with Lana tonight, okay? I mean, what Rusev tried to do with the U.S. flag, that was absolutely despicable. In every sense of the word, despicable. If the Big Show can catch heat and the WWE catches heat for the Big Show, what he did against Russia, why can't Rusev and Lana get heat for what they did against the U.S.? And then the U.S. guy tonight standing up for America... Good for him, I say. Good for him. But what happens, Howard? Rusev takes it a little too far by kicking this guy in the head. I mean, that was an absolutely despicable thing. And Rusev Fucking should be fine. He should be suspended for that. I mean, that was absolutely classless in every sense of the word. Then you go on to uh, the whole uh, Brie Bella and Nikki Bella thing, however. I mean, that's kind of hokey. But Mick Foley coming out, however, to show up during the Seth Rollins-Ambrose matchup, however. I mean, if you ask me, Mick looked terrible. He really did. I don't even know why they even had to have him on the show. And then at the end of the night, however, you have to have Mr. Sellout, Seth, kiss me ass Rollins, stand on the top of the kitchen, I'm the man, I'm the man. Yeah, gee, why? Let's see about it. Oh, that's right. You're kissing Triple H and blowing them every turn there, Rollins. I bet it tastes really good for you, buddy, doesn't it? I already Give me does. an F and break. All in all, however, I say it was a thumbs in the middle, a thumbs down on the show, however. And as far as the show Sunday, I think they're in big trouble heading into Sunday. It's got us, uh, we're, we're pretty butthurt about it. Yeah. Well, the highlight point, the high point, the low point, uh, let's get to it quickly before we ask you're, 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 anything. You're, you're pretty, Good. like, you get your, your, fe- your feathers are pretty ruffled this evening. Like, this show has well, got you is. hot. I'm, Oh, well, man. Mike, think about well, think about. I mean, like I said, the whole thing. If Big Show catches heat and WWE catches heat for the whole Rusev taking down the flag thing, why can't Rusev get fined or even warned by Vince McMahon because of what he did to the U.S. flag tonight? Why can't he? Hold, you hold tell on, me hold that. On. There's a good chance. I mean, I mean, they, that didn't the whole uh, Big Show thing. It took like a week for that to like pick up steam. It's only been about an hour and a half since that's happened. You don't know that he could get in trouble. JD. Yeah, I th- he should. If the Big Show can catch trouble for taking down the flag, however, and he has to, WWE has to apologize to the Russian fans for it, why can't then Rusev? Oh, because he's uh, a project in waiting. I'm sorry. That was classless what he did. That American guy had every reason to stand up for the red, white, and blue, and I would have done the same thing, however, but it was despicable what he did to that soldier night. It was absolutely despicable. Well, he did, like, uh, you're despicable, like uh, Daffy Duck. Well, I wouldn't say anything like that, no, but it was just just, just disturbing to watch. Uh, high point, low point, let's get into that real quick before we go and ask Jade anything. The high point of the night, however, I would have to say was maybe Randy Orton laying out Paul Heyman. I mean, that's another thing that really irks my chain, however. If Paul Heyman says, my client Brock Lesnar is the champion still, I mean, there's already talk, however, Brock is coming back possibly in early December at the Slammies in Greenville, South Carolina, the week before my birthday on Monday night, December, the Monday night before TLC. Now, we've said this for weeks on end, guys. How If Brock Lesnar wants to be a true champion, why don't you start making TV more instead of sitting home like a little bitch that you have been for the last couple months, okay? Why don't you defend your belt? Oh, because you have no one to defend the belt against? Because you're Triple H's little butt project boy, too? Oh, yeah, that's right, Brock. You have no one to face because it's in your contract because you can do whatever the hell you want. I'm sorry. This is where I draw the line. If they want to have a true champion, start making TV appearances and quit staying, staying at home, you little bitch. Quit staying at home. The high point of the oh. night, however, I would have to say maybe it was the first match. The first match was great. The first match was good. Other than that, I don't think they sold me on Hell in a Cell at all. Mm. You know, if I didn't already have my nine ninety nine paid, I think I would be on board with you there that I would probably not have any interest in watching it whatsoever. Yep. All right, are we ready for Ask J.D. anything? I mean, I've had a lot to vent tonight. I'm ready to get some good points in and some uh, pissed-off points. So uh, I'm kind of in a mixed mood right now. So let's go with Ask J.D. anything. I'm ready for it tonight, believe me. All right, all right. So I'm, I'm going to pull a couple out of the chat room to start off. So we got uh, uh, Creepus Under Radar already submitted. J.D., would yes. you ever jump the rail to defend the flag a la tonight? Yes. 
I already said I would. I, I don't care if I get my head kicked off or my jaw be broken into pieces. I'd sue the WWE for what they did tonight. I would take action against it. That was a despicable thing what they did, like I said. And I hope that Rusev gets um, I mean, fined or at least a warning out. But, of course, he probably won't because he is special with his little whore, Lana. Uh, Silent Wind of Doom asks JD, how have you been recovering from your horrible defeat at the hands of Double L? Ah, I remember that. Uh, I'm recovering quite well. He has been very lucky. Double L was a little lucky, I can say. But I, there, every dog has their day. But uh, I will be back, and I, there's no quitting me, and I will get him the next time. And if he thinks he's seen the last of me, he has another thing coming. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Tony, you got anything for SJD this week since you've been lacking the last two? JD, what's your best pickup line? Ooh. Uh, date wise or just in general? Date wise, how do you get the ladies? Uh, just say how you doing. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, what is your favorite? What's your interest in hobbies? Not not nothing real cheesy or lame. Just a straightforward, uh, classy uh, thing. You're not like Ron Burgundy, shall we say? Just a real class uh, act, shall we say? I mean, I've been with my girlfriend for a year. In fact, we're going to a Halloween party this weekend. She's still trying to find a costume. I already got my costume already, and she's kind of not happy about what I'm going as, though. I follow you, you and then what are you going at? I'm going as, I'll tell you right now, and this will really make you laugh. I found it in a costume shop. I'm going as the guy from The Hangover with the baby, Alan. Who? Zach Alan and Yeah, the baby Carlos, Alan uh, from The Hangover. So, yeah. Uh, so okay. it's going to be pretty funny. We've got a costume party to go to on Saturday night, though, so it's going to be pretty fun. Uh, Wago, you got anything for SJD this week? Is it not Jeff, or is it not not Jeff? What, what do you mean? I, I understand the question there. What's there to understand? Is it not Jeff or is it not not Jeff? Uh, I don't understand if I'll say not not Jeff. I, I oh, think okay. what he's trying to ask is how many Jeffs could a not Jeff Jeff and a not Jeff could <laughs> Jeff Jeff? Uh, I have no clue. I, I'm lost on that one. I'll come, I, 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 I could guess eight on that, but I'm, I'm just I have, that's just a ballpark figure. I have no uh, definitive answer there. Could not Jeff defeat Danny Newton? Ooh. Danny Newton can kiss my you-know-what, however. That's what he and his little goon squad did by stealing my title. So, uh, you know what? Not, if I had a partner, I'd use not Jeff, and I'd put Danny Noonan, John D. Perry Winkle, and him. Hey, you said you're going to be a member of the Drew crew, so I could be, I'm here for assistance. Yes, I already, I'm, I'm already taking you in consideration as my partner. I'm already uh, extending my olive branch to you, so we can be the new Midnight Rockers and take out uh, the trash that is left out there. Well, if so, you need to have an on-a-pole match, Drew can be the pole. <laughs> no, Drew and I will be like the Legion of Doom. We'll be the Road Wars. We'll be leaving everyone our wake. We snack on danger and dine on death, and dead men don't pay uh, easy, shall we say. He's a Road Warrior. Yeah. Good, good luck with that with Drew. <laughs> <laughs> you, with Drew, you're more likely to be like the Legion of Doom 2000. Yeah, but at least we can get that Road Warrior pop. <laughs> too much of a compliment. You're considering me the height and weight of Heinen right on that one. So uh, Ferris419 asks, uh, you, you, now that we know you, you have a girlfriend, you've admitted this before, but does she like wrestling? Or is, is she someone you can no, like, drag she, along she, with you by force? She, she's not a real fan, but she, she does listen in when I call. I mean, she's listened in a couple times when I've called her, but she's not a real big fan. By any Her favorite is The Rock, but she doesn't watch wrestling per se. Ah. Uh. And she hates it because uh, I have a ton of wrestling DVDs, too. That's the other thing. She's like, I almost tell them all, like, the hell you are. You're not touching my stash. Believe me, I have a lot of good wrestling DVDs and a lot of other good movies, <laughs> shall we say. Why do, you need, why do you need the stash when you've got it all available for just a great price of nine ninety nine? Oh, cheap plug. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, Creep is under radar. I, I, I have to ask this. Does, uh, does she ever do the job for you, J.D.? <laughs> no comment. No comment. Let's leave it at that. No comment. Okay. That's a no. Just uh, Drew, I had to mute you for a while there. You had a lot of background noise. Going. Yeah, I got you back on now though. I, yeah, my well, bad. You got any? You got any questions for SJD? Uh, well, my roommate was making popcorn, so I think the best question is: uh, butter popcorn or no butter popcorn or kettle popcorn? Which one's your favorite, JD? Ah, uh, butter popcorn. I went to the movies with me and her. Actually, went to the movies last night. Believe it or not. So, oh, what'd you see? I yes. don't believe it. Well, I we do not believe to, it. 
Yes, last night we went to see Gone Girl last night. Very, oh. very good movie. You have got to see it, guys. Trust me. I thought it was one of the best. Next, it's probably the best movie I've seen yet this year. So, okay, so my question is, when you butter the popcorn, do you stick the straw all the way down, and then you like get go up to the butter machine, and then pour, like, push the button so the butter goes through the straw to the bottom? <laughs> Uh, okay, so the popcorn, because uh, that is pretty effective. I uh, was just asking if you do it. No comment. The theater took care of it. I didn't do it myself, so I didn't make the I, uh, was, I used not, to work at the movie theater. You do not. You should not trust those who make your popcorn. It's like yes. you think. You, yeah, I mean, come on. You you make yeah. your own popcorn, for crying out loud. If, if, I, if, I did, if I did make my own pop popcorn, I'd put butter at the bottom and a, little, just a very little pinch of salt on the top, shall we just say. A, just I, a little pinch. Uh, see, people would like. They wouldn't Drown just dabble in, in uh, pop, uh, the popcorn with the salt. They would just pour the whole thing, and it was very uh, of diabetic. Of course they would. Yeah, it's very But difficult. also, you know, the, the, what's good on it, too, though, and it's, it's all ranch seasoning. Well, milk duds. Uh, milk duds are amazing on it. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. What have we got? I, I think that's it. <laughs> My bad. Uh, blood sugar. I think that was. I, 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 I hate. I hate for it to go on such a, a stupid question. <laughs> go ahead, ask. Thanks. Thanks, Drew. No, no, no. <laughs> that, that was the stupid question. Drew's question. <laughs> oh, okay. That's me. Well, guys, we shall see what happens Sunday in Dallas. However, and of course, next Monday there in San Antonio, and beginning the countdown to Survivor Series. I mean, it's just. I mean, tonight, wow. however, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the rain. But I don't think they did well with the rating again tonight. Shall we say? What are they going to do for Survivor Series? They're going to do like I guess an authority versus like who? Like Dean Ambrose, John Cena, and uh, I don't know. Well, they're, tra- Usos, they're, ta- they're talking about know. turning Orton, however, and I I just can't see that happening. Who else could they bring back? I mean, you put the Daniel. I mean, there's. I mean, there's talk they want to maybe do something. Maybe before it could be Big Show. Maybe I could see maybe uh, Rusev. Some I hate to say this. Maybe Rusev will be the next uh, suck ass of the Authority. Shall we say if we're gonna have Orton turn face? You know. Yeah, I don't know. But all right, thanks for calling in, JD. We'll talk to you next week. See you next week, guys. Have a good week. Take care, dude. All right, already got the phone lines <laughs> cooking up. Anyone else wants to get yourself in line, dial in area code 760-512-7247. We already got a number of people on there waiting patiently. We certainly appreciate you doing that. And the chat room already moving along nicely. Creep is on the radar. Ferris 419, Wazili inside the wind of doom and a number of guests there. I guess I haven't plugged it yet. If you are a guest listening to us live, head to blogtalkradio.com, register yourself, then scroll on down where you can participate in the chat room so you can be part of two conversations going on at once. Trust me, there's lots of hilarity that goes on there that we don't even get to mention on. Lots of people having fun in there. So keeping the phone lines moving along here, we're going to take on our caller from the 540. It's always a mystery uh, who this could be. So let's see. 540, you're live on Mega Powers Radio's Raw Post Show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm going to get you Randy Orton. Oh, so it's Hitler. Figure it out. Where's that movie from, anyway? Or it's, I, uh, in Silent Wind of Doom's case, it's Hitker. Hey, Jen. It was, it was from Downfall. I, I never saw that movie. I, and you know, is that the one with like the popular scene with Hitler freaking out, where everyone makes like their renditions of it? Yeah, yeah. Screen no, I think that's Bang Inglorious on. Bastards. I've done that. No, no, I've done that before. That. <laughs> huh? Well, what did you think about tonight's show, Jeff? Uh, not for the last time. It's not Jeff. It's John. Remember? I know. Oh, Jeff. okay. Not oh, Jeff. okay. Yeah, it's not Jeff. We. Know, it's not Jeff, right? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> okay, it's so not Jeff. I'm glad we've got that confirmed. Nope, nope, nope. Um, yeah, so Monday Night Raw was kind of okay. The uh, good part I only liked about Raw was the uh, handicap street fight match. <laughs> <laughs> What? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> JD's got his own theme music, so we got to think of some for you too. We need to give everybody their own theme music. What's going on with this damn thing? <laughs> uh, dude, no, no one knows. Hello? 
<laughs> is this thing on? Yeah, it's on. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, Jeff? Not, hey, not much. Uh, but yeah, I will say that uh, the handicap street fight match was okay. I was kind of surprised to see the Hell in a Cell come up, knowing that Hell in a Cell, knowing that the Cell would somehow make an appearance uh-huh. eventually tonight. <laughs> but uh, but albeit from the seriousness, I want to talk talk about what Rusev did tonight. I don't think it's I don't think it was not right for Rusev to put his hands on a fan. I mean, I know the fans tried to get in the ring and tried to save the American flag, in which he did a good job. So, and then Rusev has the gall to kick that fan, and you know something? That that's nothing you do to a fan. You know, somebody has to be fined. Big. You think Big Show with him do him uh, throwing that Russia flag? Say why not do it with Rusev in the USA flag? But you know what? I think you and JD would get along just fine. Rusev is well. Rusev was just it's just Rusev. But guess what? Rusev's a bit an ass, a horse's ass. Not steady that. ass, a horse's ass. Yeah. The uh, other thing I want to mention is the uh, Wyatt family. Hmm. Yeah, I've seen some bizarre, bizarre. I've seen that bizarre promos of them recently, <laughs> and I think, and you and I mentioned this a few weeks ago. I think it's gonna, it could be the Ascension forming with Bray Wyatt. It, they're they're being very uh, vague about what the future is with what Bray Wyatt's doing. I don't see I don't see Bray Wyatt like turning on the having a new family, but I, with the smoke and everything, and Bray not in the chair, makes me wonder if Bray and the Ascension will team up. It makes me you know wonder about that. So, are you uh, going to be watching Hell in a Cell on Sunday, or are they, have they not given you at all to watch it? I'm, a de- I'm, def- I'm definitely going to see that Hell in a Cell, because I want to see what happens between Rollins and Ambrose, too. I'm really suspicious on what's going to happen, because when I saw Mick Foley come, come out tonight and uh, talk, about, talk about this match, he's... Uh, I know I wasn't watching wrestling back at the time, but when I saw the Hell in a Cell between Foley and The Undertaker, and when I saw Mankind thrown off that cell, cell that, that was goosebumps right there. Sent chills every time I see that match. Sent chills. And what you're going to see with Ambrose versus Rollins... <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel like it's gonna happen with mankind versus the Undertaker, you know? Hmm. So you think they're gonna do something really, really extreme? Yeah. I see them like, doing what? something very extreme. And what do you think they're gonna do exactly? And who do you think is gonna be the person who's gonna take the bigger risk? Is it gonna be Rollins or uh, or Ambrose? You know, Ambrose. He's been taking a lot of risk, and he's been taking a lot of bumps. But I think Ambrose is the likelihood to do that. Because this matchup is going to be brutal. You can bet this matchup is going to be brutal. It's going to be very, very bad. But if Ron Ambrose can impress all the WWE fans, then you got one hell of a main event between Rollins and Ambrose. Absolutely. Um, all right, man. So, what was your high point and your low point for tonight's show? Well, the high point was Randy Orton was Randy Orton RKO and Paul Heyman. Mhm. Mhm. And your low point? Any low point I'd give was Rusev attack. Was that Rusev attack? And. That that attack on that person, I mean, you just don't do that to an American soldier. You 
Don't attack an American soldier and when he's when he's in a he's supposed to be enjoying himself in the arena, but for Rusev to do just that, I mean, it's something I would never do to anyone. I would never hit an American soldier. I would do my best to say to support them. And when I see soldiers out here every day in my town, I support them too. Yeah. Uh, Amen. 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 All right. Thanks so much for the call, Nod, Jeff. Amen, we appreciate brother. you calling every like, week. Uh, we appreciate your strong opinions. We'll talk to you again soon, man. Have a good night. Bye, Nod, Jeff. Talk to you next uh, <laughs> I uh, I think we gotta take a break here. We'll uh, we'll be right back oh, after God, this. Jesus hey everybody, it's Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. If you want to have a priceless experience, then you'll stay tuned to Mega Powers Radio. And remember, everybody's got a price for the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> All right, we are back on the Raw Post Show on MegapowersRadio.com. Awesome show so far. <laughs> Great callers coming in. Please continue them coming in. If you want to get yourself in the queue, we still have a couple left to go through, but get yourself in line to be the first one after them. Dial in area code 760-512-7247, and I often forget you could also dial in with Skype if you prefer. Press the Skype button at the top of the page. Dial in with your Skype client. And get yourself in line. And, of course, the chat room has been scrolling nicely. I, I want to pull a comment out here that was in here earlier. Five times combo. Who's not there anymore? Where the hell did you go? Five times combo. Probably but uh, he asked, uh, do, do you think that uh, Big Show lent that soldier his gun and that's why he cared so much about it? Uh, I think so. I think so. Nice. Noise. Five points for five times combo. Nice, right? <laughs> nice, right, right, right. Right, right. right, right. Uh, goodness. So we're going to go ahead and bring on our next caller from the 954. Caller from 954, you are live on the Raw Post Show on Mega Powers Radio. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Hello, 954. 954, are you there with us? But you're real glad you're ready to get the fucking line now. All right. Do we well, have Martin Luther let's... King Jr. Is that what that's in the background? <laughs> I don't know what that was, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to our next caller. Then, good friend of the show has been coming a regular caller here. Silent Wind of Doom. Doom. You there with us? Holy crap! Hello. Hello. You can hear me. I can hear you quite well. What's up, dude? I didn't press one. I didn't expect this. Um, hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, dude. You wanted to sit oh, there and it's listen? Fine. I'm, I was going to come on eventually, so I might as well be here. I, I thought I saw the little question mark next to it earlier, but the the, the thing has been going on and off. There's been a lot of bugs going on with Blog Talk Radio. You can't be sure. Yeah, there's this is, bug this playing my... uh, Doug music every time that Notch F's talking. <laughs> <laughs> I know this Strange is my only way to, to listen in because the regular thing's not working. So please don't hang up on me when I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. I'll, I'll put you I back on. Uh, possible? Okay, good. I'll put you. Yeah, no, I can put you back on mute. Totally, man. So, so sad. <laughs> please don't hang up <laughs> please on don't. me, please, sir. Oh, I have so little too today because I, I, I was, I was kind of going through the beginning quickly because I, I was really behind, and then I missed the main event because I was trying to get you guys working. Oh. <laughs> wasn't working well, but I, I will say, um, the, the. The whole American soldier thing. Mm -hmm. Last two callers very, very upset about that. <laughs> to say Fucking that. bullshit! Yeah, they did seem to have the feathers ruffled, but just a little bit. It's, a little it's bit. not. It's not too bad that, that happened, but the bad part is, it's he took a ref bump. Why is the soldier just? Dead after barely getting kicked by this guy. You do bring a hey, good point. Did this guy through, like, go through like basic training? Yeah. I think you would like get right up and say, "Yes, sir. Can I have another?" But no, he's just, just dead. Yeah. If we could break I... the fourth wall for a second, um, <laughs> since I, I think you're not quite as passionate as our past couple callers, <laughs> and I think we can do that. I'm pretty um, sure he was a rosebud last week. 
I'm, I'm pretty sure that it, this may have been some kind of soldier who was just in the building and they brought in and this like made this guy's night or like it made his freaking year. Like this is one of the best experiences he's ever had. So I, I, I don't think he had any problems doing what, what he uh, did. What branch of the military was he? Um, I couldn't tell by uh, his camos. He was, he was, it was in the military. <laughs> G.I. Joe. Yeah, see, I don't even think it's that. I think they just put some guy, just got him some, like, they went to the Halloween store, put some clothes on him, and that's what they did. I think yeah, they did that. It's a big tie in with uh, The Rock. It's going to be G.I. Joe, and then The Rock's going to come back, and then they're going to film that new G.I. Joe movie, and he's going to be the one that beats Rusev, because, you know, that's how it works. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen any of those. Was the last one any good? Uh, it was better than the first one. That's good. That doesn't mean it's good, though. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, so, sell it with the Doom. What are you thinking about Hell in a Cell after this week? Um, I really want Orton to win now. <laughs> hmm. I, I, I don't know. I was, I was happy. I was happy, you know, no matter how... The, the fight with Cena and Rock went last time. A lot of people were complaining that they did it again so quickly, but I was happy because they fulfilled the contract of giving him a rematch, so it was over, so they could put him to the side now and have someone else go after the title. Mm. That's not happening. Apparently, unless he's going to win it again now, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, I don't know. Something's going to happen, I guess. Did did we get any new... I mean, a big show's going to be on Rusev. Anything else did we actually get cemented today or led up to? Um, I AJ versus Paige again for the Divas yeah. title? I think they, m- they mentioned both mid-card uh, titles as well. Tag match? Yeah. They mentioned, I thought oh. that was already mentioned. And we're getting a, a Mizdow TV. Yeah, which I think that that's going to be the thing that makes the show. Mm. Actually, it probably oh, will yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. Will. Oh, yeah, don't bury the lead. Indeed. But apparently, they plan to, apparently, they planned the night way in advance. Because <laughs> I, I didn't even, going into it, the recap for the episode of Raw tonight on my TV is... Huge three on two handicap matches. Randy Orton, Kane, and Stephen Rollins between Ambrose and John Cena. I noticed that too. I was like, uh, did they like just update this or did they actually have a main event booked in advance for once? Strange. It's a strange way to do business. Planning. <laughs> uh, Creep us under radar is saying in the chat room was Paige dry humping Alicia Fox earlier. Uh, I, I like to think that she was, but Wazili uh-huh. saying anytime Paige is on TV is good, but that's just me. It's not just you. I agree. Unfortunately, though, they are going to be putting Paige on the next season of Total Divas, which I'm really? not too happy about. Yeah. yeah let's After put this that whole anti diva thing, I'd say, unless she's going to be on there and she's going to be like, they're really healing it up, sourpuss that like just goes against everything that they normally are doing on that show. Then I don't know what the hell they're trying to. So do essentially, here. she should be the Eva Marie that they were trying to make Eva Marie be last year when she slapped Thanks. Jerry Lawler. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. Sure, why not? So that's about all I've got. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay, but you got a high really point, low point. I really don't have a lot tonight. Um, it, it, it was an eventful show. That's cool. <laughs> no point. My, 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 basically, the only real point I took away from tonight was the soldier doing the ref bump. But high point. Um, <laughs> that, thank you. That's the high point. My high point is the Al and Moose Leech music from Doug. <laughs> and nice. the fact that the principal from Doug was Principal Butt Savage. That's always good. That was Butt Savage. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, so I'm going to do it. I am going to be sure to put you on mute here. Thanks so much for uh, giving us some time here and sticking around, dude. Thank you for not hanging up on me. <laughs> Have a good night, dude. Don't get ahead of yourself now. He said the hang the up. Is <laughs> All right, we got uh, 954 making another attempt here. Let's see if we got it this time. 954, you're live on the Raw Post Show on Mega Powers Radio. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi there. Is it not Jeff? Well, this sounds right, like he's sure using his 999 subscription. 
pretty sure it's not Martin Luther King Jr. now because I don't remember him being King of the Ring. It sounded like it might have been Bret Hart. I had a dream. And it was worth nine ninety nine. Is it Martin Luther King of the Ring? <laughs> <laughs> Very well done, Tony. <laughs> I think Stone Cold should just give Rusev a Stone Cold Stunner. Oh, okay. That would be cool. <laughs> I think it'd be pretty cool. Is, is that all you got to say? Got to elaborate? Uh, maybe say your name where you're calling from, too? Uh, my name is Patrick, and I'm calling from Weston, Florida. Oh, you got oh, I thought that was my friend Patrick for a second. I would have been very disappointed in him. You don't have any friends, Drew. Shut up. Yeah, I do. Yeah, Drew, shut up. I have you. <laughs> so, Patrick, um, you think Stone Cold should come in and just take care of this Rusev problem? Uh, I don't know if that's uh, a very optimistic thinking. I don't expect Stone Cold coming around. Yeah, I don't think I don't think so either, but I think he should. You know, like um, The Rock did it, you know, did that a couple Ooh. of weeks yeah, you, you got a good point there. The Rock did come around. Why not have Stone Cold come around for a week and just throw a stunner on him? Get people excited while they're in Texas or something like that. You know what? Now, now that you mention it like that, I can agree. They, they could do that one week. That'd be cool. Uh, you excited for Hell in a Cell this weekend? Yep. Yes, I am. Awesome. Yes, what what am. match are you excited for? Ooh, yeah. The Seth Rollins versus um, <laughs> Ambrose inside the Hell in a Cell. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Drew White there. Uh, that's, why has why that match got you especially excited? Was yeah, it uh, anything they did tonight? Or is it this extended feud that's been going over for months? Oh, that, with the night. Because, uh, I like that. that I like that brought the cell down in the main event, the three-on-two handicap match, street fight. And, you know, like, um, unfortunately, um, 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 team of Randy Orton, unfortunately, Kane, Randy Orton, and uh, Seth Rollins got the win with um, Randy Orton pinning Dean Ambrose. But, yeah, like, um, I remember, like, um, one of the callers saying, like, uh, the match between, like, Undertaker and uh, Mankind <laughs> were, like, uh, Taker, um, but Taker, um, like, you know, like, <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, um, push, push, throws him off the cell on the south table. I kind of see something like that going on. Yeah, like raising the bar, because it's been a while since we've had someone really blow our minds with a Hell in a Cell match. These matches the past few years, especially ever since they went to this pay-per-view thing, have not been what we expect yeah. of Hell in a Cell. We, what know, do you mean? Parking right back with good for you? What? Which one? Excuse me? Excuse uh, both me, Punk and Ryback. Rybacks. Punk and yeah. Ryback? No. Absolutely was, not. Yeah, oh, well then. No. Yeah. I'll just shut the fuck up then. All right. Um, okay. And now, the, the just one, another thing I just want to say What's about up? tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw was, um, mm-hmm. the, of course, I'm sure, like, we're all we're all pissed about it. Um, what Rusev just did, he tried to tear down the American flag, and then a fan who was an American soldier tried to get into the ring, and, of course, security stopped him, and then Rusev kicks his, or nearly kicks his head off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course. And you're like, mad? Yeah, I feel bad. American soldier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <American> soldier. <laughs> no, this, you know, you, you're not alone in this. You know, we've had a, three callers now that have called in being upset about this. You know, maybe know. us as hosts, we're, we're a little more callous. You know, we're bad people. But <laughs> it seems like a lot of people are hot about this. Yeah, but uh, of course, like, but yeah, um, I would have like, like, you know, I would have done the same thing also. I would, I would, you know, like, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would rather get, I would get my head kicked off for America. For America, all right, all right. I like that. Get your head kicked off for America. That, that that should like be the way we praise this guy. He got his head kicked off for America. Um, who do you think is going to be the person to stop Rusev? Who could stop this this Bulgarian brute? Oh, apparently that fucking bull guy that shoot him out the ring. He did a pretty good fucking job. These are facts. <laughs> hey, all, these guys that that that... Hey, all these guys that can't stop Rusev, the bold guy just walks up to him and goes, Hey, stop that. Oh. Wasn't that that uh wasn't that, that cop that arrested Stephanie McMahon a couple months ago? I thought they weren't cops. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they were. Uh oh goodness. Alright, Patrick, your high point and your low point for tonight's episode of Raw. What was the best part and the worst part about it? 
Okay, my best part would have to be, of course, the, obviously the main event of of the show with um, mm-hmm. and John Cena, Dean Ambrose versus Kane, Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, and three on two handicap street fight. And of course, later um, in the match they would bring down the cell, and the match would continue in the cell. Of course, like um, of course, like Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, Kane gets the win, but then Seth Rollins curve stomps him. And then he's like, you know, and then like, of course, like he climbs on top of the cell, like, you know, like, oh, he's like confident going into hell in a cell, you know, mm-hmm. uh-huh. And the, and the low point is what I just said now, what Rusev just did. Yeah, You know, man, like I said, you're the third person that we've had call in that's hot about this. It, it It's good that WWE is evoking emotions. Uh, but they also want to be careful not to cross a line because whether we like it or not, they are still in this era where they have to listen to investors and they have to worry about advertisers and all those kinds of things. So if people are going to be calling and complaining, there's one thing you don't want to piss off. It's people who like America because there's sure are a lot of them in America. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right, Patrick. Thanks for calling in, man. You have a good night, buddy. Yeah, it's been good. Nice being All right, Patrick. Uh, no, this is Patrick. <laughs> oh goodness all right we've had lots of callers tonight here on the uh raw post show and mega powers radio we still got a little bit of time going on out here so if you want to get your voice heard here on the raw post show dial in area code 760-512-7247 or dial in using the little skype icon at the top of the page and we already got the chat room filling up uh, already. It's an hour into the show. I'm already starting to get tired. I don't know about you guys. I don't want to talk anymore about Raw. Fuck Raw. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, we barely even whoa, whoa, talked whoa, whoa. about it. We only talked about like, one thing. Exactly. Whole... We haven't talked about anything today. Everyone else has done it <laughs> We just did our, what, what we thought about Raw. And then we just said that. Yeah, it's like being, okay, call the, number, all... call the number one. Yeah, fuck Rusev. Okay. Call the number two. Yeah, fuck Rusev. Call the number three. Yeah, call number three. three. I'm not Jeff. <laughs> 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 and fuck Rusev. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, the flag. Well, ball, I'm, surprised, ball. Well, yes, I'm a little surprised that people were taking this really, really serious. Mainly, be, well, mainly because, uh, mainly because I guarantee, not, not. Well, I'm just, just looking at this from the standpoint of someone just watching Raw, just casually or something like that. I bet the, the same people who who are complaining about this are not going to be the same people who are complaining about Big Show pulling the flag down. And it was just, which makes sense because you know it's like a nationalism type of thing, you know. But still, oh well, who cares? You see, I know I'm a bad person because as soon as I saw that, the first thing that I said was, "Man, imagine if he did that to a legless veteran. Imagine the hate he could get." Yeah, I know that. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny when you were thinking that same thing. I was thinking, "Holy crap, they're playing that music that they used to play with Lex Luger. He should beat up Lex Luger." <laughs> <laughs> no, what they they should do? They should get bring that one legged guy from TNA. He should have been. Uh, I got dressed up as a soldier. Yeah, I was about to say, don't they have a legless veteran in TNA? Yeah, they could break off his leg and beat him with it. That'd be sweet. Well, you know, Dean Ambrose kind of could have done that tonight. He, That guy could have been the dummy. I mean, all right. Died. Well, all right, so let's talk about that segment. Huh? <laughs> Dean Ambrose comes out with a giant duffel bag. First, he pulls out another bag. And then he pulls out a dummy, a giant, like, like looked like a CPR dummy type yeah, thing little... dressed up as Seth Rollins. And he was like pulling an arm off of it and he was jamming a screwdriver into its face. And this was just bombing. And it's a shame because Dean Ambrose has been a guy who has really been knocking out of the park with all of his backstage promos and pretty much anything he's been doing. And this, uh, unfortunately showed that the guy is fallible and he's not going to go out of there and knock it out of the park every single time. Not saying I'm losing faith in the guy, but you know, everyone has their off nights and this was certainly one of them for Dean Ambrose. Well, let me get your guys thoughts on it. Tony. You know, I really should have loved this a lot more because I love my stupid puns. And I did think that some of these were funny when he said like, we're going to hammer this out and uh, you know, whatever, I got to give you a hand on that one, that kind of shit. I saw, <laughs> Yeah, that kind of stuff I like, uh, and I I like how he gave it a pile driver because the fuck we never see them anymore. <laughs> yeah, that was but neat. you know it was a weird situation with the promos tonight where they all went on way too long, mm-hmm. and there were parts in them where people could get really into, it, like Orton's people could get really into it, and then Cena comes out and it's just like fuck man, the it. entire audience just goes yeah I was over this promo about like four minutes ago, 
And the same thing happened with this. Uh, if this would have been a shorter thing, maybe on a different part of the night or something like that, it could have gone over like gangbusters, but it just didn't work tonight. Wherever the positioning was or the energy or whatever the fuck ended up being the reasoning why, it just didn't do it. And it's a shame because it could have been great. Because, you know, earlier in the night, they had a good little thing going back and forth with uh, Cena and Ambrose. And hell, Cena, uh, Ambrose even got the thing right where he tossed the piece of popcorn into his mouth. If I ever try to do that, I fuck up. And he even got that right. So, you know, he's not infallible, like you said, but you put him in a bad spot like this pun's promo, and he's going to fail. Hmm. Wago, you've been uh, the biggest fan of Ambrose and uh, the earliest detector of his success, I guess you can claim. What do you have to say about tonight's performance? I'm very disappointed in him, but given the material he had to work with, yeah, I can see why. Unless he came up with this promo on his own, and then in that case, he, yeah, he did terrible. I don't think it's going to hurt him in the long run. He had an off night. It happens. So as long as he gives us a strong performance at Hell in a Cell, the future is bright for Ambrose still. But I agree with Tony. There's just been a lot of promos that were really solid, and then something just pushed it a little further, and it just got lame as hell. Yep. Drew, clean us up on this. Uh, I would, but uh, Dean kind of left the mess in there already. But anyways, so you guys kind of wrapped it up. It was good, but then it just kind of went on for too long. I, yeah, the, the dummy thing, I thought it was funny at first, and then it was like, okay. I thought it was actually going to do something interesting with the dummy, but then it just got stupid. Uh, thankfully, uh, Mick Foley came out and did the segment. If it wasn't for that, this would have been a total dud. And like you guys said, everyone has their off nights. And, you know, I mean, The Rock, Shawn Michaels, they all had their off nights. So, yeah, I have no worries that Dean Ambrose will be fine going forward. Because he did do, he, he did have a couple of backstage segments with Cena later on in the night. Mm-hmm. Anybody, yeah, else we... hmm? Anybody else hoping that they're going to hook up the Seth Rollins dummy with the uh, Katie Vick one? Mm-hmm. Happy ending? So when you mentioned Mick Foley, Mick Foley saved this segment significantly. Um, he came out there and he really sold, even though he was wearing this Santa Claus shirt, he sold the importance and the dire consequences of a hell in a cell match. And as some callers were saying, this kind of gives some foreshadowing, like maybe these guys are going to do something nuts and step up what a hell in a cell match is. You guys feel like, uh, Mick Foley saved this and that that might be the same feeling you're getting from that. They did exactly what they needed to sell this match on the good ones and not the horrible ones from the last five years, man. Yeah. Mick Foley's promo was fucking sweet and it's probably one of the high points of the night for a few of us, but nothing is going to sell me on this match because I know there's too many restrictions it's, for the most part, I don't give a shit that the product's PG. The only time I think it hurts it is in situations like this. A bit of blood, a few crazy spots, a hell in a cell can go from a normal match to a five-star classic. So they need to, if, unless we're going to get something special, I expect this match just to be crappy. Mm-hmm. Anyone else anything? I, I kind of disagree with Wago. I think this match is going to be good regardless. But hey, but like, but like he said, you know, if just you know, they, the, the point Mick was going out there was that this match is supposed to like ruin, change everything about your life. And I feel like if Mick is telling people to do that, then they've got to at least be doing something a little bit out of the ordinary, make it a little crazy for the people watching it. So I don't know if it's going to be blood or maybe a crazy spot that they haven't really done for the past few years. I'm, I'm really expecting something maybe big to come out with uh, either of the Hell in a Cell matches. Don't I'm really anything. glad that Foley came out to give Edge that pep talk going into the uh, Hell in a Cell match because, you know, Edge really needs to get in the proper mindset. Um, wait a minute, I'm going back to uh, 2007. <laughs> I thought about that myself. <laughs> I'm glad you yeah, were. that was the first thing I thought of. But I love actually, that promo. That's one of my favorite <laughs> promos of all time. It was a good promo. I not only won't help you, I can't and help you. Help you. I love the way Ow, he says you're that. attacking me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this uh, promo was more. Yeah, my love's shit. Have and fun. Isn't Santa awesome? 300 days, cheap hop. Uh, I love Foley. Anytime Foley's out there, uh, it's an upgrade to me because he's the man and uh, an awesome person. So 
Seeing Foley on TV is an instant thumbs up. Having him build a little bit more toward the Rollins match, even better. And you know what? Another thing that makes me happy about this, it really seems like it starts driving home that point that this is going to be the main event instead, because that should be the main event. I don't give a shit about whether or not Orton's in the match, whether or not the winner of the Orton Cena match gets a number one contendership spot. No, that kind of crap. I don't want to see that in the main event. I want to see Rollins versus Ambrose in the main event. Having Foley come out there and talk about that, not only is that the match that I'm more interested in, but WWE has this rule that they've been doing. I'll see it, even though they don't necessarily acknowledge it, but the first of two of the same match in a night doesn't end up having anything going on with it. Like the first uh, Money in the Bank match, a lot of the time they don't take a whole lot of risks. The first Elimination Chamber, they do like a normal elimination chamber and then the main events, the one where you actually have the spots and all that. You can't do that with Cena and Orton. You have to do that with Rollins and Ambrose. So they have to go on last. Foley needs to bring those guys into that kind of mentality to get the crowd pumped up for that. Awesome. Hmm. Well, if I recall correctly, I don't believe that uh, Undertaker Mankind was the main event. No, if, it, if there's like two of the same match kind of a thing. Like a TLC match, like two TLC ones. One of them, the whichever one goes first, is like the tamer one. So Orton and Cena is going to be the tamer one by by far. So yet another reason not to have that as a main event. Well, you alluded to it there. Uh, our other Hell in a Cell match that we're getting in this double Hell in a Cell made event, as they're calling it, is uh, John Cena versus Randy Orton for the umpteenth time. This time in a Hell in a Cell, which is actually the second time they face each other in a Hell in a Cell, we learned this week that it is going to have number one contendership consequences to it. So whoever wins gets a match against Brock Lesnar for that title, meaning we could either see Cena versus Lesnar again, which I don't know if I necessarily want to see, or Orton versus Lesnar, which Orton has been picking up a lot of steam lately between just his character on screen and all these memes that are going on around the internet. I can actually buy and be into an Orton versus Lesnar match. And I got to be honest, not so into the idea of another Cena Lesnar match. So I'm really have much more of a vested interest in seeing that match and seeing Orton win it. So, you know what? They won me a little bit. Uh, I do agree with Tony. I don't know if I'm ready to see that one as the main event over Ambrose and Rollins. I think that those guys have busted their butts and they deserve that spot. But I guess we're going to wait until Sunday to see about that. Let me get your guys' opinions about that though, Drew. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I, I'm actually playing Orton wins this match. I'm actually I did, I did uh, Lesnar and Orton ever face each other went during his first run with the company? I, I don't believe so. Yeah, I, I, then I'd rather see something that something new. Even though with that, I mean they're definitely not in their young age anymore. But you know that's something new, and I think that they could do something good with it. It could also lead into maybe a Seth Rollins cash in with the way that they were they they set things up tonight possibly with the Orton face turn after Hell in a Cell. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, you know, you bring up a good point. Should that mean an event or not? Probably since they uh, added the title implications thing into it. And, you know, there's certainly so in most cases that should be the main event. But you remember that Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, that's been a feud since June. They need to finish that off. And I think that one definitely needs to be the main event. Send the people home, ha- home happy because they've been putting on hell of a matches ever since uh, – uh, they've broken up the shield. So I'd rather see that in the main event. Hmm. Way you go? I'm definitely an advocate for Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins going on last. Those guys have worked their asses off, and they're the more entertaining feud. More Ambrose and Seth Rollins, because let's face it, Rollins has been fucking boring for the last month. Um, Randy Orton versus John Cena, we've seen it God knows how many times. They're even... But saying that we've seen the same match before already on TV, so what's to sell it? They've not really. That's one of the things that they're missing from this feud. There isn't a real reason for one to win up than the other. Uh, for one guy to win more than the other, and that's why I'm disinterested in. That's why most people will be too. So, so Ambrose versus Rollins definitely needs to go on last. If they are turning Gordon babyface, it's not going to make a difference what spot he's going to be on. He's going to get a huge uh, pop of momentum once he turns face. Yeah. One thing I want to mention tonight was the when Paul Heyman came out during the, which kind of saved the Cena 
uh, Orton segment as well. Oh, absolutely. I thought, I thought Orton was doing a fantastic yeah. job out there Same. by himself Same. until Cena decided to come out there and do his, oh, I'm an old man. Uh, cartoon, old his man cartoon jokes. impression. Something he's yeah, seen. Nice Flame promo City. you've got there. Be shame if I fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have more to say, Drew? No, no, I was just, uh, I was just saying stuff. I just thought what uh, Wago said was funny. No, you can All play right, that then. the rest of the show. I think uh, that just that that serves what the show has been, just music. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I I really don't know what the hell else to talk about. We had a meaningless six man tag match again. We had a couple of meaningless. Divas matches. Uh, Cesaro versus Dolph Ziggler. Cesaro got a win over the Intercontinental Champion, but shit, who hasn't lately? So, <laughs> yeah, he's much... the IC belt now. He beat the champ. Yep, uh, good point. But I thought all those matches served. I don't know if they served a purpose, but I all thought that they were good matches, no matter what. I mean, oh. the Miz. Now, I mean, okay, we got to mention one thing about the six fan tag match. Uh, Miz on commentary going crazy when Miz down won. That was. Probably that was fucking funny. That was probably the best thing I've, that I've heard in like weeks. So they're a very that, good pairing. I I, yeah. I think this was like an unexpected thing that everyone would have thought was just gonna be really stupid and hokey, and it, it, both of them are getting a very good rub out of this. Exactly, and I I don't know why. I think that like really set, made me have that's that's probably why I thought the show was better than may, maybe you guys did. Maybe because that thing just made me like laugh so much. I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a good episode of Raw. And it turned and to me, the rest of the show was pretty good for the most part. Yeah, I, the problem is that was like the second segment of the show, and then they still the had first like two and a half hours after that. Yeah, yeah, that's unfortunate. I don't know. They need to fucking just. I mean, for a while during the summer, they started the show with the actual like match they need to stop doing these segments with the authority for a while they weren't even doing it with triple h but now it's fuck me right i've got a question which i don't know if i'm nitpicking about tonight's main events or not but mm. if it's a street fight mm-hmm. why the fuck are you tagging in and out that's what i thought i thought you have thing. three bad guys that are meant to be devious cheaters why the fuck are they not just gonna use their numbers and destroy the baby face team? that's not oh. nitpicking that's completely – like, it's a no-DQ match. There shouldn't be a tag rule because they, the ref can't throw you out on the match. Well, well see, okay. it's no DQ, but if they don't tag, they might get counted out. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. But it's a No, this fight. is a street fight. That means no – Yeah, there's just a complete – There's no count outs. Different than uh, but no holds barred match as well. Hmm. Now, yeah, what, in what a did they actually they can... fight in the street? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. In a match where you can just decide to lower a fucking cell down – they shouldn't be fucking tagging in and out. That was stupid. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm just nitpicking, but shit like that annoys me. It's insulting people's intelligence. Um, we got a, a new cane tonight. We got General Cane. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have Demon Cane, Corporate Cane, and now General Cane. Yeah, they should do a six man tag with just those three on a team. That should be a Survivor Series team. They should just come up with one more cane to throw out there. Oh, they do. They have they have Undertaker Kane. Under there we go. They have four. No, and they also have uh, what was it? What was the name of the uh, Imposter Kane? They have that one as well. Fake Kane. Fake. Yeah, I was Kane. gonna say fake Kane. Shitty, sl- shitty sleep. Not Kane. No shitty a tattoo Kane. God, that fake Kane looks stupid. <laughs> yeah. Biscuits oh. and gravy. <laughs> Maybe um, a Kane. So I don't know. I, I I really don't have anything else to talk to talk about this show tonight. You guys got anything? Um, it's not. Can we just all agree that the Bella Twins fucked up anything they was doing right? Then they should get off TV forever. I think that um, Brie e- Bella. even Brie Bella was not getting the crowd to go along with her with that yes chant tonight. I like, think there's only like maybe a fun. tenth of the crowd doing it with her. Her think- being associated to that chant does nothing good for Daniel Bryan. Yeah. I think Brian's going to be fucked when he gets back. Because it's not going to be like that pop, oh, wait, there's Daniel Bryan, let's all do the yes chant. It's going to be, oh, there's been a slight yes chant for the past year because of your bitch wife who should have oh. came out of the womb. So, Wazili asks a very good question. He asks, what the fuck is Brie mode? And I did my research on this because I was very curious, too. And, uh, you know, wait, for you a while I was just know? like, oh, what the fuck, I'm not going to bother. I found out what Brie mode is. Yeah, it's something from, it's her getting drunk. Yeah, it's it's from uh, it's from Total, Total Divas, Divas, and basically Bree Mode is whenever she gets drunk and turns into a raging slut. 
Oh yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's, so basically, when her music plays, it's essentially I'm a slut. Yeah, exactly. It's like a Jeff Hardy slut, from slut. Uh, <laughs> doing the job for JD. Scam oh. mode. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. They everybody learned something today. Um, I think with that we can uh, roll right along into our good and bad and ugly for the night. Yes, it is our good, bad, and ugly, where we talk about what our favorite part of the show, our least favorite part of the show, and what the most embarrassing, god-awful part of the show was. So let's go around and ask the panel what the good, bad, and ugly was. Let's start with Mr. Drew White. Uh, my good will be uh, the Miz and Miz Dow. I like uh, fucking gold between those two, especially the Miz tonight. Uh, my bad will be uh, Bree versus whoever the hell she was facing. Oh, Whaler. My bad. And then my ugly, it's going to be uh, John Cena interrupting Randy Orton because fuck you. That's why Cena. I, I, I usually stick up for Cena, but not tonight. No. Just no. It's a bad Cena. <laughs> bad Cena. Yeah. Bad Cena and a maximum of the hand. Wago? <laughs> as far as my good goes, it's going to Mick Foley's promo work. Excellent job. Pretty much the only highlight of the night for me. Uh, my bad goes to the Divas match. I was so disinterested at that point, but it did serve as a good piss break. And my ugly has to go to John Cena being an old man. There wasn't anything that was too offensive on tonight's show, but if someone walked in on me fucking watching John Cena do that, I'd want to change the channel and go, I was just looking for it. Tony, you're good, bad, and ugly. Uh, the good when Rusev kicked the head off of that soldier. Fuck, I'm gonna turn heel. Uh, no, uh, actually, in general, that was my good. The execution could have been a lot better. I didn't like Big Show's um, section to this, especially the part where he just goes to find <laughs> Rusev and goes nowhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he turned into fucking Taz. Um, Did he even catch Rusev for the end of the night? I don't think so. He just went to his locker room and then he was just kind of like, ah, that's good enough. I can yeah, maybe we have to find out because Big Show is still looking. Maybe he's like, he caught him on the app. He'll be looking through lockers like, damn it, I can't find this potato. <laughs> Fuck, it's probably gone spoiled by now. So uh, it could have been better. They could have executed it um, maybe a little bit cleaner with that kick and made it seem more like it was a legitimate just guy from the crowd or something. But I like that they're trying something different. So that's mm-hmm. my good. Uh, my bad, it's going to go to uh, another thing with the Rusev thing. They still haven't fixed that B problem. Fuck. How many times is he going to have to swing that flag and actually stop those bees from attacking him? That's the real problem here. Funny uh, enough, Adam Rose is suffering from a B problem too. Oh, I know. Well, yeah, he's the lack of uh, you know, <laughs> that's, that's the whole thing here is uh, the B needs to be ringside with Adam Rose and then he'll be the one that beats Rusev. That's where they're heading. I'm I guarantee it. Uh, the ugly fucking man. It's tough to figure out which one of these to give it to because the Dean Ambrose promo could get it, but Cena's promo probably takes the cake with that. I really would not be um, happy with somebody seeing that and make me, uh, you know, reflect back on me. Just like Wego was saying, if somebody came in and they saw that whole like. I'm the old man, and, well, you know, just shut your mouth, Randy Orton kind of thing. It'd be tough to defend it because you couldn't be like, well, this is something that makes me laugh because it isn't. And then if you go, well, if you think this is stupid, why the fuck are you watching? You'd be like, well, I watch it every week, even when it's terrible like this. You should have seen it the past couple of weeks where it was even worse. Oh well, that's not a fucking <laughs> reason to do it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Jesus. So, that's such a great way to put it. <laughs> yeah, it's really tough. Um it's pretty bad when my response earlier in the night was that the ugly was going to be, hey, it's the fucking World Series. I don't care, but fucking it turned into this instead. So, Cena, you're getting the ugly for this week, and it's a shame. 
Where, all right, well, my good, bad, and ugly, my good is going to go to Mick Foley coming out and doing his bit. Mick Foley single-handedly selling Hell in a Cell more than anybody else on the final week of the show. I think that's that's a problem with the current staff that's there. But moving right along to my bad, I have to actually give this to Dean Ambrose. And I, I never would have thought I would be giving Dean Ambrose a bad, but that whole segment was just a bomb. Um, but as bad as that was, there was one thing that was worse, and it was that freaking John Cena killing Randy Orton's momentum that he had there. So Her, is that a unanimous so decision on that one? Um, uh, is it? Might be. Yeah, I, I, th- I believe it is. I believe we all did say that that was the ugly. So there you go. Fuck <laughs> you, John Cena. You, you, no, someone said the divas. No, I, I said that as a bad. I said it as a bad. You know who didn't okay. say the divas? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna miss that. <laughs> oh, now you got Lillian Garcia. It's a Davis match. I'd love uh, to get Justin Roberts to say, oh, "You know what I'm saying?" <laughs> oh yeah, he probably does it better than Sean. Maybe we get, could get him to do his Sergeant Slaughter impression at the beginning of Mega Powers Radio. It's not more enthusiastic. <laughs> not, but not quite as enthusiastic as not Jeff. Uh, he's pretty fucking enthusiastic. When it comes mm. to enthusiastic Jeffs, he's got it up there. Yeah, well, I prefer not enthusiastic. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. So um, let's uh, let's close things out here with our plugs. So Drew, start us off. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, you know, it's uh, addressive white for the Twitter's font. You know that kind of. Thing. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or if it's like a bad thing that it's played. But anyways, uh, you know, the uncool movie show is whatever uh, What's-His-Face Big L's show is. And uh, I, I forget the name of that. But yeah, uh, just follow what everyone's doing. Fuck Tony's tykes. And actually, it's a lowercase d. Did you mute him? No. I don't know what happened <laughs> Wow, I mean, it annoys me because on uh, Mago's uh, description for uh, his videos for Smart Cat Moment, it's a capital D. And Wait, I don't hang know, on, Drew, Drew, Drew. You've been talking this whole time? You've been absolutely silent for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you, you got to start over then. No, I don't know. Fuck you guys. I do. <laughs> no, really. Like, you cut yeah, out. Like, you didn't hear like, anything you said. Totally. What part did I cut out then? What part did I cut out then? Uh, you were bitching about my uppercase D, which... Is well, it's, wow. Well, it's, hey, hey, hey. I get your name right. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Mango. Yeah, you certainly right? don't get the uh, the ask him right. Anyway, this is some fucking... No, no one gets the ask him right, okay? Nobody does. It's such a thing. That's bullshit. That was a shit question, and you know it. Let me do the ask him. I bet I'll give you a shit question. <laughs> it's a very shitty one. All right. Way go. <laughs> all right, for all your MMA needs, you can go to udmma.com, facebook.com slash udmma, and twitter.com slash udmma. Also, check out Addicted to Anime here on megapowersradio.com. For more information on that, go to facebook.com slash addicted, to, addicted anime fans. Hold on to your butts. Tony Mango, do your plugs. Mark out moment. You can find everything there. There's a lot of links. Go search it. <laughs> yeah, I finally got that one on the soundboard. It's a long nice. time coming. Wow, I didn't you, know else... you had no way of putting that in all night, so you had to do it there. That's sad. Yeah, I was like, oh, we're getting into the show. I gotta put it somewhere. <laughs> Not during a big show segment where it would have been relevant. Shut up, Drew. Shut up, Drew. Shut up, Drew. Yeah, shut up, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to be concluding things here tonight. Thank you for joining us. If you had fun, dial in or tune in, whatever you got to do. Yeah, <laughs> Mango phoned in his plugs, and so am I. Just just, just go to megapowersradio.com every Monday night following Raw. That's where you'll find us. If you can't join us live Monday nights, join us in the archive version on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, YouTube, and smartoutmoment.com, that very same website where Tony told you to go around and click. So yeah, just with that, folks. Stuff. Ads, you know. <laughs> Yeah, mango tree. No, well, yeah, we, can get tr- we, we can get in trouble if you do that, Tony. Don't do that. Oh, uh, they ain't fucking paying attention. <laughs> Lower tasty. Here you go. Here's a All little right. finger to you, Google. 
with that, we're going to take off here. Thanks, everyone, for listening. For Tony Mango, for Stephen Fuego, and for Drew White, I'm Mike Payton. Have a good night.